What are tsunamis? Large waves formed due to an earthquake, a volcanic eruption under the sea, or a submarine landslide are tsunamis. A submarine landslide is just a landslide on the ocean bed. You might be wondering where this word tsunami came from. Tsunami means harbor wave in Japanese. Now, it's called a harbor wave because these large waves are visible only near the harbor or near the shore. When the wave is still far away from the shore, it's not very clearly visible as a particularly large wave. These harbor waves, these tsunamis are very dangerous and they can wipe away entire buildings, they can wipe away entire villages. It's that bad. Let me show you an image of the 2004 tsunami, which was the Indian Ocean tsunami, one of the deadliest in the last hundred years. This tsunami killed nearly two lakh people across many countries. Now you might be wondering how these large deadly waves are formed. A tsunami is formed like this. Let's say this is the surface of the sea and this is the ocean floor. Let's say there's an earthquake at the ocean floor this earthquake would cause a disturbance to begin to move upward. And when that disturbance reaches the surface of the sea, the sea would form a wave like that. This wave would soon fall down because of gravity and form two smaller waves. Both would move in opposite directions like this. And this wave, when it reaches the shore, will cause havoc. Now, uh, this disturbance could be caused not just by an earthquake, it could be caused by a landslide or a volcano under the sea. Okay, let's see what happens to these two smaller waves when they reach the land. So let's say this is the land, okay, and this is the shore, this is the land, and this is the sea. And here we've got our small little man, a human standing there. And this is a normal sized human. Just to show you the magnitude of the size of the wave, I'm uh, drawing the human a little small. And this portion of the wave that is moving towards the land is called the crest and this portion is called the trough if you look at this carefully this is like a valley and this is like a peak of a mountain right so crest and trough peak and valley now this wave is moving steadily towards land it's moving at a very high speed 800 kilometers per hour is an approximate speed of a tsunami wave it's so fast that it's very hard to get alerted about this wave. And moreover, this wave is pretty small when it's away from the shoreline. So now as this wave moves towards land, you'll notice that the trough here is getting closer to land. When the trough hits land, like in this picture, you'll see that the sea will recede back. What does that mean? That means that that dividing line between sea and land is shifted to this point. Right? What does that mean? That means that it'll appear as if the sea has gone back. Now, our human may consider this a nice opportunity to explore the sea, but it is a very bad idea to walk in towards the sea. This is the point when you have to run away from the sea. Okay, anyway, let's uh, go ahead. So the wave starts moving closer, 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 and it engulfs the man. You can see that the wave can be even a hundred feet high. And this is not an exaggeration, not a rarity. Most tsunamis are very tall. So that's how a tsunami comes into land and wrecks havoc. Let me show you an animation of this entire thing. This is an animation made of the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. There was an earthquake under the ocean on the ocean floor and that causes a wave on the surface of the ocean. That wave is pretty small right now and as it moves it moves very fast as this wave moves it will slowly gain size it will become larger and larger when it reaches the shore it will be very large now you can see here that the sea is receding back right it's going back going back it will continue to go back quite a bit and at some point the large crest or our mountain or the peak of the wave will come towards land and you can see the crest coming towards land there you go it's just about to hit land and there it hits land and the moment it hits any settlement it can wipe away entire villages buildings many coastal villages were destroyed in, in the 2004 indian ocean tsunami so how does one react? What should one do when there's a tsunami? Well, if you ever see the sea receding, run away as far as you can from the shore, as fast as you can from the seashore. Um, be 
informed about tsunami warnings if there are any signboards around be aware that a particular zone that you are visiting is a tsunami prone zone also if you are visiting a tsunami prone zone and you hear of an earthquake run from the shore okay there's very less that one can do to predict a tsunami and there's very less that one can do to prevent a tsunami from doing damage. It's very hard to build a big wall to stop a tsunami because most tsunamis can break down walls or they just flow above the wall. For example, in Fukushima in Japan in 2011, there was a large disaster. A nuclear power plant was destroyed by a tsunami. A nuclear power plant has very dangerous chemicals which can harm people even 30, 40 kilometers away from the power plant if the power plant is destroyed. And in this 2011 tsunami, the Fukushima nuclear reactor was destroyed and that wrecked havoc till a 30 kilometer radius around the power plant. Even though the power plant had a wall to stop tsunamis, it just could not withstand the tsunami that hit it. That's it for this video. Thank you.